So the Sixers lose in a thriller to the Celtics, but should Joel Embiid's final shot have counted? And should Sixer fans be more pessimistic or optimistic? We will break all of it down here on Philly Take with RB. Perfect. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the show, RB here. Hit that like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe by hitting that red button down below. Hit that bell so you don't miss any of the coverage. Today, we are back. Tough one last night. Tough way to end it. I think the final result and just the last couple moments really made it sting, you know, 10 times more than it probably should have. But we will break all of it down here. Should the Sixers actually have pushed it to overtime should Sixer fans be happy or frustrated with this loss and a whole lot more I want to start it off here with something real quick this was actually just put out not too long ago I reposted it on my Twitter and said that there's no way this actually exists this is a report from uh, Marcus Hayes and this tweet was actually deleted so I haven't refreshed but this has actually been deleted since I just wanted to show you guys an example it says Joel B could quote force a trade to a franchise that actually understands basketball if the Sixers continue to falter. That was an actual report tagline. So kind of what I've been saying here in terms of not believing everything you read, this is just a prime example of that, but uh, enough with that, enough with that. Anyway, a quick question here to start this one off. Should Sixer fans feel more or less optimistic After the Sixers lost last night to the Boston Celtics, let me know. There have been a lot of ranging opinions. I'm going to give my clear, concise thoughts, and we'll talk about the game, how it ended, and uh, what this means for the future going forward. So Sixer Nation, chime in down in the comment section. Should the Sixer fan base be pessimistic or optimistic after that loss last night? But before we get right into it, shout out to the sponsor here of today's show, Manscaped. They have recently entered the market for beard products. They are revolutionizing the game with the men's new grooming product, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. This cordless trimmer right here has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 different hair cutting lengths with just one guard. Yes, 20 different hair cutting lengths with just one guard. It's waterproof. It has a titanium coated T-blade and it is tough on the hair, but smooth on the skin, leading to more efficiency and a better process. Their entire Pro Kit comes with beard shampoo and conditioner it comes with beard oil and beard balm, which all overall help the shape of the beard, you know, promote beard health, reduce ingrown hairs, things like that. Their pro kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors. So you can get all these things in one, man. Definitely go check it out for all my guys out there, uh, you know, that have nice beards and want to keep them in check, man. Check it out. Uh, this game changing product. Go down to the link, click the description. And use promo code Philly Take to get 20% off and free shipping upon checkout. All right, let's talk about this one, man. So here is a summation of my thoughts last night. It was obviously tough the way it ended, but I really do think there are good and bad things that you can take out of this loss. I summed up my thoughts about the bad part of it in a tweet here, but let me start off on the positive note, okay? The positive note is that You went toe-to-toe, you fought tooth and nail with one of the best teams in the NBA. Really, the Eastern Conference favorite, Boston Celtics, a team that embarrassed you weeks ago with four starters out. You went right down to the wire with that team, and you battled, and you had a good chance to win the game. And a lot of players and you know some of the key players you will need in a playoff series stepped up big, even though they haven't in the past. So that was a positive sign for me. You were right there. You were right at the finish line. You just could not finish. Now, the bad part about it, and as I said here in the tweet, you know, I was happy with the game. Uh, Overall, when I take a step back after that last part, you know, where Joel Embiid's shot doesn't count, where I was really frustrated, you know, and we were live for this game. So again, we react live during every game in real time. We give the commentary, the breakdown, be sure to tune in. Um, But I said, you know, in the third quarter, I was nervous. And when the Sixers were up 15 points, they needed to extend that gap, right? They needed to get it to a point where it was almost impossible for the Celtics to come back, but they did not. Celtics go boom, boom, boom on a 9-0 run. Then the bench unit has to come in. Otherwise, you'll gas Joel Embiid. And right then and there, the Celtics end up coming back. But that's what good teams do, right? They're very deep as a squad. It pains me to say it, but they're a damn good team. They were in the finals last year. They know what it takes to go the distance. But 
Here's where I'm frustrated about last night. Joel Embiid had 41 points. He had a master class of a game. Joel Embiid, I don't want to see one bit of Joel Embiid negativity. He was absolutely incredible. He put up 41, and by the way, they were double teaming, triple teaming. There were a couple plays where they threw the whole damn team at Joel. They can't stop him. Al Horford was baby food last night. Nobody on the Celtics or any other team can put a stop to Joel Embiid. You just have to let him get his. He's one of those players. He played incredible across the stat line. You held the opposing team's best scorer, Jason Tatum, in check the entire game. He had a nice shot on the last play of the game, and I'll be honest, you know, it was a great shot. Now, it was off balance. I thought Melton did a good job getting back. He put a hand up, contested it, and Tatum actually shot it off balance. It was a good play, and people were saying, oh, you should have had to buy a song, should I talk? It doesn't matter. Melton stayed on him for the most part and had a hand in his face. Tatum hit the better shot after having a poor game. So I give him credit. But you held Jason Tatum in check all game. That's a positive sign. But at the same time, Joel had 41. Tatum was doing nothing the entire game. And you had a 15-point lead in the third quarter. That is a game that good teams win. You have to be able to win that game. That could decide a win or a loss in a playoff series. And that's where I'm frustrated after last night. You know, I'm seeing a lot of people being content. Oh, well, we, we took him to the end. We took him to the wire. Everything went your way. You should have won that basketball game, and I will stand on that and stick to that. But anyway, let's let's talk about what happened at the end of the game. And let me know if you agree, disagree. Give me your thoughts. You know, what? how do you feel? I think there's good and bad to take away. I'll give more of my thoughts here in just a second, but let's talk about the infamous shot. So should it have actually counted? Here's the play. Right at the end of the game, you know, obviously Tatum's going to hit the three. This is what I'm talking about. Watch Melton get back. I mean, he was right in his face. It was just a nice shot on the road in Philadelphia. You got to give it, give credit to Tatum. He's a great player. Here's Joel. He had to turn, get out of the way of Derek White, shot the full court, but it didn't count. Time ran out, and he was asked about that post game, and he said, quote, story of my life. I love that. that. That's like so personable. I feel like a lot of people would say that, you know, just my luck, story of my life. But anyway. Uh, What a shot it was. I mean, it almost counted. And Barstool put out the other angle. Look at this, man. Philly sports, 2022-23 in a nutshell. Losing championships. And then Joel heaves a full court. He did this against the Suns a couple years ago. It bounced in and out. And look at them. That's so tough. I mean, that game should have went to OT. That was such a good basketball game. Just taking my, my own fandom out of it. That was a hell of a game. That felt like a playoff game. That was the first game where I was like, okay, this is a real playoff atmosphere type of game. But should it have counted? Should it have counted? Well, shout out to, uh, shout out to Cornelly here on Twitter who stops it and had a photo. And look at the shot clock, 1.5. Now, in real time, there was 1.3 on the game clock when Joel got the inbound pass. 1.5, the ball is through the hoop. That should not have counted down to 1.3. Now, we can go back and forth. We can say this about a lot of things, a lot of games. So I'm not going to sit here and say, this is the reason the Sixers lost. No, this happens in a lot of games. It is frustrating. It's disappointing. That shot should have counted. That extra two-tenths of a second, if you go back to the play, would have allowed Joel to make the shot and win. Or not win, but tie to have a chance to win in overtime. But it happens in a lot of games. I can't be mad at it. The Sixers lost the game. When instead of extending that 15-point lead, they let the Celtics go on a quick run, come right back. Now, the Celtics did let up a 10-0 run late in the game with five minutes to go, so that cannot be ignored. The Celtics showed vulnerability, but again, they are the beast of the East right now. They are deep, deeper than the Sixers, and they played out of their mind. But once again, one more time, look at this. Let's go to Joel inbounding it. You see 1.3, but look, shot hits. Let me pause it in real time, right? There, 1.4, but it actually was 1.5 a a half a second earlier, and it should have been, you know, 1.5. But anyway, it is what it is. It's over. Technically, it should have counted, but, you know, we're done looking at that. Uh, My other thoughts, though, on the game. My other thoughts on the game. One, Tyrese Maxey and the bench experiment is over. He needs to go back in the starting five. Now, Melton and Maxi, one of them will have to sacrifice shots, okay? Because whoever's going to be in that starting five, you just have, you, you don't have that much uh, opportunity to get going because you have Harden and Embiid running the offense. You have Tobias Harris 
who played good last night. There's just not enough shots to go around. So somebody will have to sacrifice. Maybe overall, Melton is a better idea in the starting five because he brings that defensive value more than Maxi. But here's what I have to say right now. Maxi has lost all of his flow off the bench since the injury, since going to the bench. And Melton was giving us 10, 12 a night off the bench. And now he can't find a flow. He can't do it. Both of them have looked awful. If I'm the coach, I don't know if it's permanent, but right now I would move Maxi back to the starting five and I would put Melton back in the second unit. Melton seems more comfortable leading that second unit right now. Those are my thoughts. That's number one. Number two, PJ Tucker could be an X factor for this team. Last night was the PJ Tucker that Daryl Morey signed back in July. 16 rebounds. He played great defense the entire game. Yeah, he had a couple bad possessions in the fourth quarter, but he played great and he showed, and he was a big reason why the Sixers kept Tatum in check. P.J. Tucker, if you can get that level of P.J., if you can get that playoff P.J., the one that was with Miami that took this, this Celtics team to seven games last year, then, hey, you might have a shot because with that combined defense of Tucker, Tobias, Melton, you can probably have a good chance of stopping some of these other really, really good scorers. P.J. played great. If you can get that level of P.J., if you can get that level of Toby that put 12 up in the first quarter, and you can get a little more of a consistent maxi, whether off the bench in the starting five, you might have a good shot. I think the Sixers still have a glaring issue, which is the backup five. Uh, Paul Reed showed last night. He's just, I mean, he's not really that able to do it. You know, like Paul Reed's a good energy guy. He's a high, you know, motor type of guy. But against these good teams, I mean, he didn't do anything last night. He had to get pulled after a couple minutes. He was like a negative nine or something in like three minutes. Trez can't really be that guy as we've seen. Deadman is battling an injury. I don't know how he got an injury, but is he? do you have a lot of confidence in him coming in to be that guy? Last night, Doc went to PJ at the small ball five. That was the most effective unit, but can that sustain in a tough playoff series against a beast on another team? You know, if they have a, a great backup center or if they're staggering minutes and have a more athletic guy, can PJ be a consistent backup five? I just don't know the answer to that question. So, that right there is my main thoughts from the game last night. I thought the Sixers did a great job holding them in check. I thought there were spurts where the Sixers stepped up and played tremendous defense. They were locked in. They wanted it. You know, I don't think this was a, a result of laziness. I just think that Boston's a better team, and the Sixers had a chance to close it out, and they did not, and it came down to the final possessions. It was a thrilling game. It was a thrilling one, and it showed me that the Sixers can be in that moment. They can hang with this team. So I do have a bit of optimism in that standpoint, but there are a couple things that must be fixed that still leave me hanging out right now saying, I don't know if the Sixers can go all the way. They need to get past that threshold, but at the end of the day, we're we're out here trying to, you know, win a championship. This team is tired of getting bounced in the second round. They want to go all the way or else you're going to have some big decisions to make. So is this team good enough to win it all? What did last night show you? And, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on that. So we'll have to wait and see how they fare in this next stretch. But definitely a benchmark game last night. Good and bad to take away. Give me all of your thoughts down below in the comments section. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And like always, I will catch you all on the next one. Peace. Peace.